Hi, I am Akos Ledesi from Vanderbilt University. In this project, we utilize NetBlocks, a collaborative block-based programming environment that extends SNAP with a few carefully selected abstractions, then open up the vast array of resources freely available on the internet for student programs. Moreover, the tool enables students to work together on the same project remotely, similar to how Google Docs operate. The two abstractions that allow students to access the internet and create distributed programs are remote procedure calls and message passing. Remote procedure calls, or RPCs, let users make a call to a function that runs on the server. Related RPCs are grouped together into services. For example, the weather service has RPCs that return the current temperature, humidity, wind speed, and so on at the desired location specified as an input argument. Let's see RPCs in action. The blocks related to RPCs and messages are under the network tab. To use RPCs, we need the call block. The first pull-down menu selects the service, Google Maps in this case. The second one selects the RPC, let's use GetMap. As you can see, the block reconfigures itself to show the input argument. Just a few more blocks and we have a zoomable map. The simple script on the sprite lets us click anywhere on the map and display up-to-date COVID data. We can add data processing and also use the chart service to create even more compelling applications. The second abstraction that supports distributed computation is message passing. A Netsdogs project can send a message to another Netsdogs project running anywhere in the world. Messages carry user-defined data payload. This enables students to create multiplayer games and also other fun distributed projects like a chat room or a shared whiteboard. These two abstractions, RPCs and messages, can be used to remotely control and communicate with Wi-Fi enabled devices like robots, sensors and even your phone. This simple program lets us tell the robot to go forward, stop, or by handling this message from the touch sensor, slowly back up. Netsblox projects can also connect to mobile phones via the Netsblox server. Using the phone IoT service, they have access to all the phone sensors. Of course, they need to provide the password automatically generated and displayed on the phone's screen first. This project tracks the location of the user's phone and displays the track on a Google Map background. I sped up the video so that you do not have to watch me drive around the neighborhood for 5 minutes. Also recreate the classic labyrinth game by streaming acceleration data from the phone and moving the ball sprite accordingly. See how Devin is tilting his phone to avoid the holes and get to the green flag. With NetBlocks, students can control multiple devices from the same project. Here we turn the phone into a remote robot controller. See how Nora drives her robot with a soft joystick and the stop and beep buttons on her phone. To enable remote learning, Netsblocks also includes a virtual robotics environment. Multiple students can join the same room and program and test their robots collaborating with or competing against each other. The exact same programs work with physical and virtual robots. The Robotscape online environment can be used in scenarios beyond robotics as well. Here, the student's program controls the traffic signal based on vehicle sensors embedded in the environment. The traffic pattern is automatically generated by the tool. Make sure to check out Netsblocks at netsblocks.org and download the full IoT app for iOS or Android from the App Store.